Hello everyone, my name is Chad Miller, and I am a Toy Geek Maniac. So, welcome to the Eternals Hall video that I have. <laughs> um, this was a, a bit of a strange story. And um, to start it off, um, in case you haven't seen the videos, previous videos, um, I purchased the Target exclusive of Fina as portrayed by Angelina Jolie. Then I was gifted, um, what was it? Yeah, it was Fastos, um, portrayed by Brian Tyree Henry. And then after that, I was gifted Icarus, who is played by Richard Madden, uh, popularly known from Game of Thrones. So, um, I was going about adding the rest of the figures to my Amazon wish list, which I did. And then it got to me that I was like, wait a minute, we're missing a character and uh that was Ajak and I was like why can't I find her on Amazon and so you know boop, googled and found out that she's a Walmart exclusive so I was like oh there is no way that I was gonna acquire her my Walmart literally never has Marvel Legends, ever. Or if I'm lucky, there might be one or two on the shelf, and chances are I probably already have them. So to find an exclusive at Walmart is like finding an exclusive at Walgreens, basically, even though Walgreens has several just ancient Marvel Legends still on the shelves that they're still at regular price. So I was just like, yeah, so that probably isn't going to happen. Um, so one day I was uh, headed to work and as I was driving, I, I was just like, wait a minute, I don't have to be there till 4.30, not 4. And I always get to my job like half hour to 45 minutes early just to sit sit in the car and chill and gather my mojo and calm my anxiety and all that kind of stuff anyway so I was like that's a lot of time to kill if I'm getting there that early so I'm like eh let's just pop into Walmart and just see if by chance they have a jack and um because I had checked on the app and they only had her available for pre-order and she wouldn't arrive until like December 2nd. So I'm just like, oh, come on now, really? 
So I hop into Walmart and <clears throat> I'm heading to the action figure aisle and on end cap is this humongous display of Eternals Marvel Legends. Like humongous and it was stacked and I was just like <laughs> And I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There was Ajax, so snatched her up real quick. And I was just like, man, I, I couldn't make the whole collection right here, right now. But I was like, I can't drop that kind of money at the moment. So I was just like, dang it. So I was just like, I'll just get Ajax and we'll see what happens. So I went to work, did my thing came home and there were two packages from Amazon on my doorstep and lo and behold through some weird cosmic fate I now have every single Marvel Legends Eternals figure thanks to you scribers out there it, 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 it literally was like the fates were with me. It, it, it was just so cool because that hardly ever happens. It isn't very often that I feel that I need to complete a collection for the Build-A-Figure. Um, most often the Build-A-Figure isn't one I'm concerned with. Um, I have... I have two, two complete sets to make a build a figure in my collection. Um, the and because they were both like fascinating lines. Um, one was the first Age of Apocalypse line. There's another one coming out soon, and then uh, the other one was the Age of X line that had the Tricentennial build a figure. Um, I didn't actually post a review for that. Um, I might throw a little snippet in right here as I'm talking about that. But all of my Age of Apocalypse videos are here on YouTube if you want to watch them. Um, it's kind of exciting. I've looked back on them and I was just like, oh. <laughs> but anyways, let's get on to Eternals. So initially I was going to construct this into four different videos. I was going to do two figures per video and then do a single one on the Build-A-Figure of Gilgamesh. So as time was going on and I was doing the reviews, I came across some frustrations and it started to bother me. And So after I got done filming, I kind of held off on editing and I was talking to my husband about my reaction uh, to some of the aspects of this collection. And aside one thing, and I'm not going to get specific, um, he felt that I was overreacting about things in an action figure. <laughs> this is my passion. And he understands that, but he was just like, babe, these are action figures. They're, you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and uh, get rolling on um, what I'm going to do is just make quickie little reviews of um, all the figures end it with a review of Gilgamesh and let's get started So first up uh, we have Sprite who is played by an actress. I'm not familiar with her name is Leah McHugh and she plays the youngest of the Eternals and um, Considering that they're 7,000 years old, uh, which is about all I know about the Eternals um, I've done a little bit of research here and there, but, um, as we go along, um, I'm going to talk about face sculpts 
and um, how disappointing they are in this line. And uh, the face sculpt for Sprite is one of the most ridiculous of the line. So that is very, very unfortunate. Up next, we have Cersei, who is portrayed by Gemma Chan. And if you're an MCU geek, uh, you will know that Gemma also played Minerva in the Captain Marvel movie. And I, I believe that's the first for a single actor to portray two different characters or multiple characters in the MCU. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. I feel that her uh, face sculpt was pretty decent. Not totally on point. I think um, she's absolutely stunning in her features. And I, I, it, I think they were almost there with it, but just didn't nail it. Next up, we have Druig, portrayed by Barry Keegan, I'm gonna assume is how you pronounce this last name. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> it's so weird because at first I thought he was played by Ezra Miller. <laughs> how wrong was I? Um, and I'm not uh, familiar familiar with Barry, but um, he has a very distinct look to him, and I, I think that they got halfway there with his action figure. Alright, so here is Kingo, portrayed by Kumail Nanjiani. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. Um, and um, I'm not too familiar with his work either. I've seen a lot more interviews with him than some of the other actors. So, um, I, I'm looking forward to his performance. Um, unfortunately, his face sculpt, I feel, is very inferior, and that kind of takes me out a little bit. Up next, we have Makari, portrayed by Lauren Ridloff. And this is a groundbreaking character. Um, actually, there's quite a few groundbreaking characters in this film. Um, and uh, she happens to be a deaf character, uh, a very first in the MCU. And um, uh, the face sculpt for Lauren's character of Makari is, I would probably say, average. Um, I don't think they captured her beauty as well as they could have. So that brings us to Ajak, portrayed by Selma Hayek, and this is where I also have problems with the face sculpt. She comes with a, a second interchangeable head. Now the first one with her headdress on, I think it's pretty good, pretty good. I'm going to say maybe... 3.5 out of 5 stars on that one. Um, however, the second one... No. Can't. <laughs> Alright, so before we get on to uh, Gilgamesh, uh, portrayed by Don Lee, um, I talked about what I feel about the face sculpts. Um, the costumes, however, are astounding in detail, uh, and I think that's the best part of the line. And not too many of them come with accessories, so, you know, it's all based on their power set for the most part. Um, I would have to say that the costumes just resound. And even though there are some of the costumes, because of the design, it hinders like the articulation, which is troublesome because you are still giving articulation that we can't use. Um, so that kind of, but it's form versus function, and I totally understand that. So that is something that I truly love about this line. 
also the fact that there's so much inclusion into these characters, this movie, this toy line. We have men of color. We have women of color. We have an LGBT representation. We have a deaf character. Um, I, I, I love it. And I, I can't wait to see how it's interpreted. Um, I hope it isn't a hit you in the face, hey, we're being inclusive kind of thing. Um, I just hope it flows naturally. So let's go ahead and get into Gilgamesh. So as I said, Gilgamesh is portrayed by Don Lee, an actor that I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, however, he's done a crap ton of films. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, he seems like a very genuine and gifted person, so I'm excited. There's a lot of great things about this cast that I hope gelled very well in this film. So Gilgamesh has his pivots, a good look down, a pretty good look up, um, not too bad there. Great lateral lift in the arms, bicep turn, double jointed elbow, multifunctional. Flex up in the wrist isn't so great. Oh, actually, you know what? He's one of the ones that has the side to side pivots. This is something that's uh, been. I think maybe this is only the second figure that has had that. Um, his right hand is um, up and down. So as with most of the other characters in line, there is a torso twist, and there isn't a waist turn. Uh, lateral lift in the leg isn't too bad here, considering hindrances from uh, the costume. Um, so you get thigh turn, multifunctional double jointed knee, no boot turn. Got the pivot in the foot that I love. And eventually, maybe I'll get there with the left foot. No, I'm gonna turn the right foot. Pivot forward, or <coughs> flex forward, sorry, excuse me. And flex back. And like I said, uh, the attention to detail on the costumes is just glorious. Um, lots of metallic finishes, um, etching designs, it's, it's really a shame that they couldn't nail some of the face sculpts, um, because, I mean, in, in all honesty, it kind of ruins the line for me because it is such amazing detail to give to the body and such lackluster performance in the faces. So that is the rest of my haul for the Eternals figures. I want to thank the subscribers who sent out all of them. Um, ex except for the two that I purchased myself. Um, you guys have no idea what this means to me. Um, I say that a lot, but it, it really does. Um, yeah. I'm gonna try not to get misty here. Um, so now, um, I kinda had to pick apart my, uh, MCU shelf here, uh, for the Trump Retreat event, uh, that's my job put on because I did a WandaVision theme, uh, so I had to 
take them off the shelf. Um, but I, I honestly, I don't have room for too many more MCU characters, but it's going to keep happening. So uh, the shelf beneath it here, which you can't see, it's going to be the second shelf for MCU characters and will be featured in future opening credit sequences. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me. Uh, if you have comments about uh, my commentary, um, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, we can agree to disagree as long as we're respectful. Um, I thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribers are coming in at a pretty steady rate um, over the last nine months and I, I, I couldn't be more grateful. So thank you so much for being a part of Red Slim Productions. Love and light to you all. Do you have a gun?